with a record of one win and 15 losses and a percentage of 60.9%. The Carlton Blues are really struggling in 2018, struggling more than what most people would have thought coming into the year. There are calls for big reviews for the Carlton Blues, namely the sacking of Brendan Bolton. But is it really warranted? And are the Blues are in greater shambles, as is said in the media. I'm Ryan from AFL Access, and this is a breakdown of the Carlton Blues. So if we go back to the start of the year, the Carlton Blues are looking pretty good. Coming off of what was a decent 2017 campaign, 2018 looks to be a promising year. Unfortunately, with Sam Doherty going down from the back line, a lot of their drive from the back was taken away from them. And that's been really evident this year so far. But other than that, the year was looking quite promising as their younger developing players became more mature and started to take on more responsibility. Patrick Cripps has done that in spades and is definitely going to be the captain of the club next year. Really, it probably should have been done mid-year when Murphy went down with injury. That's not to say that Murphy's doing a bad job, but Cripps is better. He is a better leader, and he is more of a spiritual leader and a leader of that club now than what I think Mark Murphy has ever been. Uh, Mark Murphy's been a fantastic player, and he's been a long servant of the club, but I've never really found him to be a really powerful leader of the club. Patrick Cripps, however, is just the man to take on the role. A lot of people are calling for Brendan Bolton's head, but we need to actually have a bit of an assessment of the Blues. Is Bolton doing a bad job? Are they as far behind as what they seem to be? And are they a poorly run club, which seems to be said in the media? Let's tackle number one. Brendan Bolton. I have a lot of respect for Brendan Bolton. I think he talks well. I think he's got the players on board. I think he's doing a lot of things right to take the club forward and progress. Unfortunately, things haven't ideally gone his way or as well as what he would have wanted to for this year. But that's not to say that he's doing a bad job. One of the key things that is going against Brendan Bolton at the moment is the amount of GWS fringe players or just fringe players in general that have been brought onto the list over the subsequent season. If you have a look here, these are some names that have been brought in under Brendan Bolton's campaign. Now, a lot of these players are more depth players than anything else on a good team. But when you don't have a good team and this is all that you've got to work with, well, it's not going to make a very good team on the day. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, if they were never going to be best 22 players in the first place, why bring them in in the first place anyway? And the answer to that question is actually really simple. There was no other choice. Carlton had to move on a lot of its past players, a lot of its fringe players, because its fringe players were worse than other clubs' fringe players. So to be able to teach and evolve the young developing players into proper competitive beasts, they had to bring on a bit more experience, they had to bring on a bit more talent to be able to show the younger developing group how to properly play football. And unfortunately, the players that were let go, who were already on Carlton's list, were just not up to the standard of being able to actually do that. Now, this means that these players that were brought on were only stopgap players, really, until these younger brigades sort of grew up. Carlton have been their own worst enemy in terms of recruiting and training. However, in this instance, I think that is a problem from Brendan Bolton's predecessor, Mick Malthouse, and to a lesser extent, Brett Ratton. Now, Brett Ratton had a decent list going. It was looking to be, you know, competitive within finals, but realistically, they were probably not going to win a premiership with the, with the team that Brett Ratton had created. Bring in Mick Malthouse and he guts the list or needs to gut the list is not able to do so in the way that he would like to. Uh, some unfortunate players leave that he probably didn't want to let go and then results in his sacking and uncompetitiveness, and Brendan Bolton has to come in and clean up the pieces. Now, to clean up the pieces, he has to effectively gut the entire club from the bottom up to be able to rebuild the club into what it needs to be and what it was once known as, as a powerful premiership-playing team. What this basically means is, is Carlton 
has effectively become an expansion team without any concessions. They've had to gut their entire list, basically bring on a couple of fringe players and mature age recruits, and build an entire team from the draft. If, if you go back and look at the expansion teams, and more recently Gold Coast Suns and the Giants, they were very uncompetitive for a number of years because they had a lot of youth coming through, and even though they had some mature development and mature players on their list, it just wasn't enough to carry those younger teammates through until they developed into proper players. This is basically what Carlton are going through right now. They've had to gut their entire list of any experience that was just crap, and bring in a lot of new youth and new talent, but at the same time, still bring in players to remain somewhat competitive to be able to teach these players and young guns what to be able to actually do on game day. Now, we are actually seeing some of the fruits of this labor through some of the players. Patrick Cripps is only getting better every time that he plays. Charlie Kernow is looking to be an out-and-out star Jack Silvani is a bit of a tricky one. He seems to have been getting better since he was dropped early on in the year and he's you know, made a shift to the back line a bit, but he has made improvements this year over a couple of years ago. Jacob Wiedering is also a bit of a tricky one. He was a much better player in his first year when he had a lot more support in the back line. But now that he doesn't have as much support in the back line and Liam Jones has effectively taken his role because Liam Jones is not a great player... Wiedering seems to be caught in two minds with what to do in defense. He wants to play his natural game, but is unable to, and he's being played more as a one-on-one -on -one defender, which is not to his strengths. He's much more of a loose defender as opposed to a one-on-one -on -one defender. That's his strengths, and unfortunately, because we because Carlton have to cater to Liam Jones's strengths, which is also loose. It's leaving Weedering out to dry, which if you want to develop Weedering into the player that he is destined to become, you need to either cut Liam Jones out of the side or make him play one-on-one. -on -one. So do I think Brendan Bolton is doing a good job? He's doing an okay job. He's doing a good job. He's doing a job to the best of his ability, and to be perfectly honest, I cannot see a lot of other people doing it as at, at, you know, better than what he's doing it at the moment. It's an extremely tough gig that he's been handed and patience does need to be had with him. Brendan Bolton will be an absolute fantastic coach in the long run if you give him the time to be able to develop the team. But you have to understand that patience is required and needed in the type of rebuild that Carlton have undergone. They haven't just gone through a rebuild. They've basically gone through and, and and built the club from scratch. That's basically what he's gone through and done and is in the process of doing. So unfortunately, and you may not like to hear this, but if Blues fans want to actually get back to the ultimate success of the Premiership, you might have to go through a bit more pain for another two years because until the likes of Charlie Kerno. Petrovsky, uh, Petrovsky-Seekton, uh, Silvani, Wiedering, and so on and so forth become, you know, you know, reach that age bracket where they're actually really good players, you know, that 23, 24 mark where they're really coming into their prime. I can't see Carlton making finals in the near future. Now, I cannot stress this enough. The Carlton Blues are not as much of a basket case as it appears to be on the surface. They're going through some hard times, and they may even set some really bad records along the way. And unfortunately, that's what comes with aiming for the top. If you want your team to be thereabouts consistently and all the time, then by all means, rush the rebuild, bring in some really big superstars, and push for finals, and maybe make top five, top four. You won't win a premiership doing that, though. So what do you think about the Carlton Blues? Do you think they're a basket case? Do you think that Brendan Bolton needs to go? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, please do leave a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and ring that bell to receive notifications when new content comes out. We do also now have a Facebook page if you do want to follow that. This has been your AFL Access.